Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man who coached Manu his entire NBA career. Head coach Greg Popovich. Thank you, welcome. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna get through this. I know I am. Uh, I'm uh, I'm certain I'll get through it. Tony, if I start to stumble, slap me. Say, Pop, come on. Well, uh, when Manu first came into all of our lives, I can still remember that first year and during the summer telling Timmy, we got this guy coming. And, you know, RC and his guys did such a great job finding this young kid who was fearless, a little bit of a whack job. On, on, the, on the court, but uh, tenacious, tough, and I would tell Timmy, I said, Timmy, this, this guy can play. He's, he's good. You're going to really like him. And Timmy would go, yeah, yeah, Pop. Okay, fine. You know, I've heard that before. And then Manu came, but he had a bad ankle, and he couldn't really do much. And so he was like a half a player, and finally we decided we're going to sit him down. We're not going to play him until January. And then he was healthy all the way. And I would guess that once we brought him back in January, it took Timmy about a week. And he said, oh my God, who is this kid? And he figured it out very quickly, very quickly. I, uh, and I had the, the honor to coach him. But before I go on, there's another guy here uh, who coached him, and that's one of my assistant coaches from Italy, Ettore Messina. Are you over there, Ettore? I don't know if we have lights that can find him, but Manu played in Bologna for Ettore Messina and won his first Euro League championship. And that's uh, important. And while we're at it, since we're uh, talking about Ettore, the, the members of the 2004 Argentinian uh, Olympic team who won the gold medal, some of those, like five or six of those guys are here beside just Fab and Manu, and they should be recognized because that's, that's one of the best basketball teams I've ever seen play in my entire life. A fantastic group of guys, and that's the truth. And I, I saw it personally because I was an assistant coach for the American team. And uh, it, it hurt a lot, but I was never happier for anybody than, than for Manu that night. So then I had to coach him here. And believe it or not, my hair was dark, dark brown. <laughs> but it didn't just get like this. It got this like... <laughs> By the second year coaching him, it was dead white. Long time ago, it was white. Without any doubt, I remember. I look at pictures once and I'll say, Mike, who is that guy? Who is that guy? And now I gotta look at this every day. But as I went, I, I became a, a better coach because I learned to zip it now and then because you'd watch him play and all of a sudden he would make a steal to win a game or get an offensive rebound or shoot a three that was totally contested, the worst shot in the world, and it would go in because he's a winner. So, so I, I had to learn to stop going to say, Manu, geez, oh, whiz, what? Do we need that? What do you, why? Well, I am Manu, this is what I do. That's what he would tell me over and over and then i'd look over at tim or tony and they would just shrug their shoulders and we'd all just move on move on but uh they the way the team was set up we all needed each other and without manu there were no championships there were no championships
it, it was not going to happen without Manu. As Tony said, his ferocity, his drive, his unbelievable will to win, his competitiveness were off the charts. But I can tell you this, in all honesty, as good a competitor as he was, and how much he gave of himself, he loved it. He loved the game. He loved the competition. It was all about winning. But that was that. What he cares about more and what drives his life are those four people right there. That's where his heart is. And that's what makes him so special, both on and off the court. He understands priorities. He was one of the greatest teammates anybody could ever have. As was stated, his curiosity, he comes in and he wants to talk about politics. He wants to talk about religion, about black holes in space, uh, everything. And that's not an exaggeration, a special, special guy. Uh, the last thing I'm going to say is, and it's been said, but it was probably the most important thing that we did in our franchise over this whole span is when Manu Ginobili agreed grudgingly to come off the bench. It's, you know, it sounds like a small thing, but it made us so much deeper, so much more powerful and dangerous. And I can tell you, he didn't like it. He didn't like me. He didn't want to do it until he thought about it. And lucky for me and our team, he's highly intelligent and understood the big picture and what it would mean. And he did it. And so he's going to go in the Hall of Fame coming off the bench. Manu, I love you.